Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Grand Tactician, The Civil War, a new strategy and tactics war game out by Oliver Kuppelmuller, which allows you to play through the American Civil War as either the Union or the Confederacy, uh, leading the war on the strategic map, assigning commanders, raising armies, and then fighting battles on the tactical maps. We are in episode number nine of our Let's Play series as the Confederacy in this game, and the war is going pretty well for us so far. It's still 1861. It's the uh, fall of 1861. And we've won several battles in Virginia, but we did lose one major one, which drove us back toward Fredericksburg. Uh, we did win a battle at Fredericksburg in the last episode, and we're going to be fighting another battle just to the west of Fredericksburg uh, since the Union has sent a small detachment to our left flank, uh, or about a core to our left flank. And we're going to intercept that enemy corps with our own force and hopefully defeat it, drive it back, and then perhaps be able to advance back north toward uh, toward Manassas Junction. With that being said, uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. This is taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel, uh, which uh, I've been running this series on my Twitch channel um, somewhat regularly, not every night, but three or four times a week. If you're interested in that, there's a link in the description where you can find it. Uh, but without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into the battle. We've had men, it's got to be Stuart's boys. George Cadwallader and his 12,000 men, I guess 14,000 men, The Battle of Gordonsville. Are we still on the Fredericksburg map, or do we have another map? I think we'll probably still be on the Fredericksburg map. Why does it say 25,000 men? I don't think we're in range. Oh, no, it did say we we're in range of uh, Beauregard's troops. Seymour e. hit. Thank you for the follow, by the way. I know that was like almost an hour ago. I think Joseph E. Johnson was more the soldier in look, carriage, and manner than any of our other generals. All right, so we are on the Fredericksburg map again. I don't know, Chancellorsville map. Okay. It's a meeting engagement. Four hours till Beauregard's troops arrive. The River Road, gentlemen. All right, so. Can I get you? I just want to rush forward and take the objective because the AI cares about that shit. All right, so where are the Federals coming? So I could deploy them down here, too. Let's, I don't understand that. That's weird. Nice high ground over here. All right. Federals, where is their blue? Over here. So they will probably come up this road toward the objective. So we'll sit up nice on these heights once we take the objective. So Johnson, just deploy your force. I think like this. This will give you the nice elevation advantage and then kind of follow the road to the east. So we'll just do that, and we'll just move at times 10 speed till we get to the objective. And then we'll maybe move forward on this crossroad if the enemy doesn't show up right away. Not sure how close they start to us. You'd think they don't start too far away, considering the game claims it's a meeting engagement. What's interesting is when the game first started, battles often had more than one objective spot, and now it seems like the game has just said, nope, that's too many. 
the battle will always be oriented around one objective. Okay, why aren't you moving? So this should be simple enough. Troops are moving into position. Objective should be ours any second, and it is. Longstreet, go ahead and move your division like this. Anchor you nice on those heights. Ooh, nice. Enemies coming up. Longstreet will get into position on these elevations here with the enemy having to come across open ground. Looks like McDowell is in command of a cavalry force. We'll bring Cooper up to Longstreet's flank. Refuse the line a bit. Slow things down a little bit here. So the enemy could cross this ford and fire enfilade fire into our uh, flank um, with artillery. They could do that. I don't think they will. Two brigades coming up here with two of cavalry and two of infantry. Skirmishers racing forward here. All right. Mixed muskets, Mississippi rifles, and Springfield muskets along the front line with mixed muskets in reserve. Dear God, Longstreet troops are horrifically armed. Oh, they had this brigade in sight. Hey, Gettysburg, how you doing? Right, let's bring Cooper up and actually... We're going to try and form a bit of a hinge here. We'll see if the enemy tries to flank Longstreet. They might. But if I could form a hinge and then sweep the enemy into the river, that would be pretty sweet. We are losing more men than they are in this skirmish. Th the skirmishers are obviously harder to hit targets. George Pickett. General Longstreet, sir. I have no division. Of artillery, I suppose. Are they going to try and flank me? It looks like they might. That cavalry is swinging to the flank. All right, Stuart, get up on this hill over here. Make sure they don't go wide around us. You're mostly here just for scouting. I can't think they're going to want to move through that rough terrain. But my flank might be in the air if they do. All right, McDowell's cavalry has moved forward here. So first cavalry is engaging dismounted. They're pushing on our flank, which is anchored along the river here. They're pushing on Kirby Smith's boys. We also got the first brigade coming up here. I think it's battery of artillery. I, mean, I guess it says you're firing. That's a terrible position for artillery. Well, well, sir, we're at the lowest possible elevation. Okay. All right, so we've got Bushrod Johnson commanding Longstreet's old brigade. And then we've got Kirby Smith, both engaged here. Early should be engaged here momentarily. Meanwhile, it looks like they're trying to swing a division 
wide into the woods. I don't know if they know that we've got Cooper forming up over there or not. It does say his troops are disrupted, presumably because they're moving through some tough terrain. Whoa, some big volleys here. 2,200 man brigade just firing into Johnson's boys. Did inflict very heavy losses on that first cavalry brigade that came forward here. This is a pretty, I guess, interesting attack from the enemy. I haven't seen a lot of like actually overtly aggressive battles where the where the AI just came right at you. It's like that's what this might be. So kudos to the AI for doing that. They're trying. It feels like they're trying to pin me with these brigades while they flank through the woods with the others. I think it's interesting the casualty figures are so disproportionate. I'm not sure why. I think they've got a, a gun, guns on the line advantage against these brigades and probably in quality of guns. I mean, mixed muskets are not very good. Yeah, we're inflicting like two to one on them. That doesn't quite seem right. First brigade routed. Second brigade routed. Minimal effort. I suppose these guys could be in their first battle. It is against the army of the Susquehanna. We haven't fought them before. boys advance Cooper's division we basically broke the federal left flank with the exception of one brigade here that's coming up Bushrod's brigade is not too far from being routed We're just going to move into the woods. These guys are fragmented, so we're going to try and engage them. I don't even know if... Uh, I haven't seen anything about Beauregard showing up yet. This could be a short fight. First volley for Early's boys. We're still trying to flank here, huh? Problem is our fatigue. Our troops are not going to have enough energy to fight long. Then again, neither should theirs. Wishrod's uh, first brigade, first time in command of Longstreet's old brigade. It's going pretty well here. Meanwhile, Longstreet himself commanding this division. Doing good work. fragmented too. Alright, first batteries withdrawing. They lost 150 men out of 1,500 and they're retreating. Freaking cowards, huh?
machin. They're going to start retreating soon. Casualties are going to be rel relatively light on this battle, I think. Just a whole lot of yellow bellies. Goddamn right. Out that only. Okay, the enemy's retreating. Not even gonna have much of a chance to pursue. But we probably wiped out all their artillery, more or less. For whatever that's worth. Away they go. We can't even chase them. They're running too fast. Stuart's too small to really do much. Hey, I wonder if that's John Pope. All right, so the enemy's going to lose about a thousand men out of fourteen. We lost three sixty. Okay, there you go. Victor victory, 600 enemy infantry, 15, or 150 cavalry, and they lose 15 out of 15 guns. We lost 364 infantry. It's a pretty clean cut win. Vitoro Villa, thank you for the follow. Another victory for the Confederate cause. Goddamn right it was. Due to his battle honors, Colonel Cooper has become famous and is an inspiration for his men. Wait, Cooper's division didn't do anything. I mean, they, they killed a couple batteries of artillery, but... That's silly. Battle of Gordonsville has ended with the enemy of army of the Susquehanna retreating in panic. Okay. 146 captured. They captured 426 rifles, 12 guns. So where are they going to retreat to? Are they really retreating? Oh, fuck. Ah. Okay, so they didn't capture the stuff we were building. But they're retreating west through the valley? Also, if they're retreating through, like, friendly territories, how do we not know where they are? Pause. What's this? Construction completed. The Richmond market is now in the state of Virginia. Hell yeah, brothers. Can you see the strategy view? We go to the strategy screen here. National morale, 79 for the Union, 95 for the Confederacy. National support, 99 verse 92. Morale of the armies, 94 verse 82. Loyalty states, 25 verse 16. Men fielded, 123 verse 64. Naval tonnage, 79,000 verse 890. Uh, military experience, 14 and 14. Battles, 1, 2, and 5. Total casualties, 22,000 Yanks versus 14,000 Confederates. And, uh, yeah. So, where are we at in terms of weapons? How many more days till these weapons are ready? Still 35 days, eh? We have so many six pound field guns. Alright. 
Well, what do we want to do with our supply reform, training manuals, trade warfare? Can we build a frickin' railroad yet? It'll take a year, a good chunk of tax revenues it'll drive, but that's a long fucking time to build. 51 million. Is there a way? It'd be nice if you could filter based on tax revenue. Anyway, um, forty four million. Yeah, no, we're not doing that. Ten days for industrialization level two. Okay. Let's do the filter for the uh, front lines map here. Give us an idea of where the enemy's pushing. No real drive anywhere except in Virginia so far. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? How do we have influence all the way into Cambridge? Wheeling. I guess that's that little. Cambridge is not. Okay. <laughs> okay, game. Whatever you say. We control Steubenville. Is that an Ohio? Uh-huh. With no troops up there? Got it. All right. See when the enemy starts moving on us again. We are working on completing a new prison camp and a new hospital. Our current prison camps are overcrowded by about 200%. New camp will help a little bit. I wonder if it automatically shifts troops to the new camp. I guess we'll see when it opens up. Also, very curious if armies stop campaigning in bad weather. All right, so those new buildings were completed. New hospital and a new prison camp. One prison camp overcrowded. They haven't transferred the prisoners yet. Oh, they, but this one is at 1,000. Can upgrade the building. Supply depot is almost done. Beauregard and Johnson both ready. How's Johnson's reputation looking after those victories? Three out of five? People just don't love him all that much, huh? Meanwhile, Longstreet's uh, his initiative's going up, his leadership's up, administration cunning. He's, uh, he's a cool cat. No one's getting like promoted. Cooper's super famous. Do we have to manually promote these guys to higher rank? Because they lose their experience and stuff like that when I do that. There we go. Industrialization policy two. Um, so that policy's done.
Now, do we do... Free trade will make Europe like us more. Tariff will generate more revenue. Finances aren't super pretty right now. Credit rating's not great. Now, we could print more money, but that would hurt our overall value of our dollar at the moment, or whatever the Confederate dollar is. Um... Does what do letters of Mark do other than like pirates? Sure, but what what happens? Hurts relations with Europe. Okay. Where are we at right now with Europe? Right, thirty percent. So free trade would help relations with Europe by ten. And then King Cotton 2 would also help European relations. I think. Okay. I don't want to raise any more troops with one year terms. We're going to jump to Militia Act 2. Cavalry reforms. Hold off for now and spending that money. He's a pretty cool cat. Confederate State Congress, 1861. You know it. Are they raising any more troops? They're still sitting at 120. They're still sitting at 120. See if they start moving here late September. They've been staying pretty stationary for a while now. I don't know if it's like because of the time of year. Union block blockade words. U.S. warns Europe not to intervene. Union blockade proclaimed legal. New chapter in the trade warfare. European trade slowing down. Uh, didn't actually hurt our relations with them, though. Still just the five locations blockaded. No indication that they're going for New Orleans or anything like that. Federal shifting some forces around. All right, what is the... Um, Monthly intelligent reports say, according to our intelligence sources and analysis, the federal government is currently discussing the following. Government funding, one. Federal relations of Spain are at 0%. Three new ships have been started construction in their shipyards. The morale of the federal armies is currently at 91%. Intelligence indicates the enemy is consolidating and regrouping, so they have, that's why they haven't been attacking. Uh, export volume was 478 million, while 651 worth of goods was imported. Corporate production slipped slightly. Okay. Tax revenues went up. Uh, actually, finances, negative 125. Okay. We have 14 million in the bank right now. National debt's 85 million. That's going to go up soon. Cotton is king. What does this do? Implement a policy of using cotton as a tool to maintain good relations with the European great powers. The very large European textile industry needs a steady flow of southern cotton, so much so that it is believed that Europe will support an independent Confederate States of America in order to protect the supply of cotton. Each level of this project further improves relations with European nations. It's an agricultural subsidy. Okay. What, uh... 
Farm mechanization is the next one for, I guess this is agriculture. Plantain, plantation mechanization. Um, Egypt, they gone. Not, not India. They planted a shit ton of cotton in Egypt that people were not expecting. But they, the Confederates did try to use cotton as a weapon, and it kind of backfired on them because I think the 1860 crop was a bumper crop. So there was a ton of cotton at the start of the war in European warehouses. They had a huge surplus. And then I believe they planted cotton in Egypt, uh, which helped replace some of the demand. I think by around 18, late 62, early 63, Europe did start to feel the pinch. Um, but by that point, the war had already, in their eyes, become more about slavery with the Emancipation Proclamation being issued, and so that was kind of a non-starter. Uh, as soon as that proclamation was made, the Europeans weren't coming in. Okay. All right, can I build, like, these stupid railroads? I really... So my logic here is I really want... I also could build some of the buildings that are we're short on. I would really like to be able to build one or two of these really lucrative railroads. So Little Rock to Memphis is that one? Eight million. Little Rock to Dallas is six million. Savannah to Tallahassee. Where is it? New Orleans to Tallahassee? Fifty five million in tax revenues. Like this would be a huge boon for us to be able to do. We need a lot more money to be able to do it. Uh, but, like, if we can get something like that that gives us a big chunk of cash, that would really strengthen our economy, I think. So I'm kind of holding off on some of these other reforms that would give us more weaponry or more some of these other reforms because that policy in of itself is going to take, like, a year. Fayetteville rifles are ready in seven days. Same for the Richmond rifles, or eight days. And then the Lorenz. How long till we get those? Still 40 days on the Lorenzes. All right, let's fast forward till we get these new weapons and then we can equip our troops with them. been seven days yet okay confederacy calls for volunteers two-year contracts Condra congress sanctions further enlistment states are forming new regiments called arms all right so colonel stonewall jackson is recovered and ready to continue his service you may assign him to a new command sharpie thanks for the follow Okay, due to the severity of his wounds, his performance will not be the same as before. Oh, no. TJ. TJ. Why is no one showing up here? No available officers for command. Confusing. Anyway, um, let's take a look just so we can see here. So Stonewall Jackson's initiative, leadership, administration, and cunning are all twos. Does say he was wounded. So that might be why his... Uh, yeah, negative 17% on initiative because he's returning from a wound. Leadership is unchanged. Administration is unchanged. Cunning is unchanged. So really just his initiative is what's impacted. And also the uh, slightly the fame. He's a, was he a lieutenant colonel before? Now he's a colonel? I'm not sure. 
All right, so do we give him back his brigade? McCullough has been leading it. He's been pretty effective. He's a Brigadier General now? Huh. He's a Brigadier General serving under a Colonel. Lol. Alright, anyway, so... Johnson. Let's standardize. We're not done yet. Half a day. All right. Never mind. Let's go forward to the next day. Come on. There we go. Weapons are delivered. Okay. So let's do this. Let's standardize these troops. So PGT Beauregard's troops, uh, you are going to... Got some Springfield rifle muskets already, but let's just standardize everybody with the same weapon. So we have 15,000 Richmond rifles. We can give everybody in this army a Richmond rifle, which are basically the same thing as the Springfield rifle musket to begin with. So Yule, Jones, Hampton, you always get all get Richmond rifles. Lawton, Huger, we're not going to have enough because of the way these brigades are formed, I think. Doesn't matter. Garnett. Harvey Hill. You can keep your Lee Enfields. Greg. And Lee. So actually all of our infantry, with the exception of Hill, which we do have enough weaponry to upgrade, so we'll do that. So everybody, every infantry brigade in the Army of Northern Virginia at the moment is equipped with a Richmond rifle, which is a version of the Springfield rifle musket with manured primer and patch box. Accurate, reliable, simple to manufacture. So we've got Yule, Jones, Hampton, Garnett, Huger, Lawton, Hill, Gregg, and Lee, all with Richmond rifles. That is nine brigades of infantry equipped with them. Okay, the Richmond is a longer range than the Lee Enfield. I mean, I'm not too worried about the slight difference there, but yeah, everybody's equipped with it now. So that's good for that. And then for the Army of the Shenandoah, which is slightly smaller, uh, we will... McCullough has the Enfield rifle. Do we have any other Enfield rifles that we can give them? Not enough for a full brigade. Why don't we give everybody here the Fayetteville, which has 500 yards. So actually the Fayetteville is longer range than the Richmond at 500 yards. This is a copy of the U.S. model 1855, which was a more difficult weapon to make than the Springfield rifle, which was sort of streamlined for production's sake during the war. Anyway, Fayetteville. So we're going to equip this entire force with Fayettevilles. And then sort of downstream, we'll shift some of these weapons to the Western Front. Um, sort of secondary theaters in perhaps our minds. Um, where, uh, where those units are still largely using smoothbores. Also, this is a huge upgrade for some of these units, which are still using mixed muskets which we had two full brigades using mixed muskets in this force. So everybody here should have the Fayetteville now. There we go. 
Okay. Good news there. That's some standardization. And the Army of the Tennessee under Albert Sidney Johnson actually has 17,000 men. So these guys are a bigger unit. Um, but a lot of, but largely because none, none of these boys have fought yet. So these guys are going to be a little bit less standardized. I don't have enough weapons left over from that production to standardize anybody. So I'm just going to kind of give them the best available. So we'll give some of these units the Springfield rifle muskets. Some will get Enfields. So we'll go ahead and give Preston's Tennessee State Militia the Springfield, or sorry, the the Enfield. The first Tennessee already has the rifle Springfield rifle musket. So we'll leave them as is. Second Tennessee will get the Springfield rifle musket. The Cheatham's Brigade will get, they need about 3,000 of these things. So they will get the Fayetteville Rifle Musket, which we still have enough to equip them. Walker, we don't have enough of any of those other really good weapons. So Walker, we will give some of those Mississippi Rifles, which came offline of some of those Eastern Brigades. And Loring, I don't know if we've got enough of any of those good weapons for you. So I think you're going to be stuck using the uh, Springfield Musket for the time being. And so the Army of Tennessee is now well-equipped. The Army of Western Tennessee. I think now we just have to make sure that the... Right, you guys have a Springfield Rifle Musket. We just need to make sure that some of these units don't have mixed weapons now. So some of these guys are still going to have smooth bores. We should have enough Springfield muskets to get rid of the mixed muskets. One of the interesting things that I also found... Oh, we've got some Mississippis also. One of the other interesting things I, I found out when I was kind of looking into the Lorenz was apparently when Vicksburg fell and the Confederates had to rebuild their, um, their army in the Western Theater, or at least the, the units that were lost there, uh, one of the things that they they used heavily was the Lorenzes, and so they and the, they used the 1841 caliber minne balls or whatnot that were used in the Mississippi rifle with the Lorenz, which may have also been part of the reason they didn't have as consistent reliability because the caliber was slightly different. Doggo Extreme, thanks for the follow. Spicy Food Gamer, thank you for the follow. All right, so everybody's equipped with better weapons now. And then we've also got the Lorenz rifle, which will be coming before too long. So if we take a look here, the Lorenz is where? The Lorenz is still a little ways away, but in 33 days, we'll have 50,000 Lorenz rifles. At that point, we should be able to give every single one of our troops. Um, also, why does this say smoothbore musket when this says it's a rifle musket? Confusing. Um, but once the uh, Lorenzas arrive, assuming they make it all through the blockade, I'm not clear if imported weapons have a risk of being intercepted or not. That would be cool if they do, uh, but I don't think they do. Are your divisions too big or unwieldy in battle? Not yet. I don't think so, Constantinius. At least I don't feel like they are. Um, but yeah, all of our troops should be able to have rifled muskets. Federals really haven't increased their manpower much. They're still sitting at about 129. And then we're probably going to want to raise some new troops soon too because some of our um, all of our brigades are one-year troops. So we now have two-year troops available to us with Militia Act 2. So I can't do any more industrialization apparently because I didn't do the pre-war industrialization focus. We could do three-year troops rather than two. That might not be a terrible idea. Mountain Ops Commander and Il Lil Bina, thank you for the follow. Um, British Intervention fell? Oh, what? Legal blockade, so British Intervention fell. Okay, whatever. It's not legal. It's not legal. It's not even enforced. Okay. 
I guess let's do... Civilian warships too. Hmm. So free trade will make the the Europeans like us more. I guess we'll do King Cotton. Or maybe Terrafact. Terrafact will make them like is less, but we'll generate more money. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's go back to weapons, and then we have to place another order for some of these weapons, right? So not these guys. So the Fayetteville Rifle Musket. Standardization is three. So we can make 50,000 of them over the next 160 days. I don't think I'm going to be raising that many troops, but... Better range and faster firing. The Fayetteville feels like the direction to go. Problem is it's more expensive. It's only a difference of two million, though. Are the sharps rifle in the game? Yes, Ace, they are. I can't make them. Uh, currently, but they are here. All right, we'll do that. Um, did I pick a new policy? How much will free trade hurt our economy? We'll do King Cotton too. Um, available projects. We're going to need more artillery also. Assignable only. So we can do infrastructure reform, which will do what? Improve the nation's infrastructure to allow faster movement of goods. Infrastructure improvements such as mechanizing roads or building new core area roads, construction of modern bridges. So this will do what? Okay. I don't, I'm, I'm full of cotton, so what's the... Right, let's do trade, trade deals. I'm, the funny thing is I'm probably not even going to go with Lee Enfields at any point. I'm going to make my weapons and then import Lorenzo's to fill a stopgap. Um, then we'll also do Cotton is King. Infrastructure reform. And administrative reform. Okay. Meanwhile, cavalry carbines. All of the weapons have been in production already in the 1850s, but there's this demand blah, blah, blah. What does artillery reform do? It lets me have larger batteries. A 
the 16 guns. Does cavalry reform do? I need more fucking cavalry. Armies of multiple cores. So this unlocks cores. So we'll do that. Give me the cores. I don't have anyone who's ready to command a core yet, probably, but... All right. So... Let's do this since it's October and it seems like things are a little bit light. Let's have Johnson move to the valley. Beauregard will stay where he is. Now let's see if Johnson can clear the valley of enemy soldiers. Or at least, you know, get this blue back to red. Confederacy is issuing bonds. 25 million more in debt. Army of the Shenandoah was moving and apparently is unhappy. Guess they don't like Johnston, the commander. Why am I singing? Get your ass up the valley. You're taking your dear sweet time. Funding one policy enacted, more focus on the union economy. They're going to inflate their currency. Oh, shit. The Army of the Shenandoah versus the Army of the Susquehanna. I didn't even see these guys over here. I guess we're going to fight another battle, huh? But we've already fought one battle in today's episode, and we've also refit the armies, so I think we will fight this in our next episode. Until our next episode, however, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again thank you for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. Leave your thoughts down below, and until next time, I'm out.